This is Andy Parole for Boxing Social in association with Pursue Fitness and I'm delighted to be joined by heavyweight contender Huey Fury. Huey, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, so how are you? I'm, I'm ticking over, I'm all good. It's good to obviously hear that you're doing well as well. Come down to the gym, uh, just have a little catch up, but it's been a while. We'll start off with your recent fight out in Saudi Arabia against Samuel Peter. Just talk to me about that experience. Uh, yeah, this was, uh, was an experience being out there. Um, Samuel Peter's a uh, very experienced fighter. Obviously, dirty fighter, he just wanted out of there. Uh, I couldn't get really out of second gear with that one, but it was annoying at the same time. He had a lot of low blows and stuff, so uh, one of them wasn't happy with the performance whatsoever, but it's, uh, it's that, like I say, he's an old pro, old season, old tricks, and he's very, um, like I say, experienced. What was going through your mind, you know, everyone could see the low blows and watching it on TV. Was there ever a time when you thought, oh, maybe I should just take a few minutes out in case one of them did catch you and you just needed to get, maybe get your breath back? He did. He did catch me. So, like I say, but with with with, uh, with him, he's like you say, when he caught with the low blows, it was like every single one of them was painful. Yeah. But it's like, if what, the more time I'm laying down there is giving him the time to rest. But uh, it was frustrating. Obviously, he knocked her head a bit, but uh, like you say, it's all experience. It's one of them, you just got to get on with it. How difficult was it for you then to try and adjust and try and to deal with that side of Samuel Peters, something that you wouldn't have had to come up against previously? And I highly doubt you'll have to come up against again in the future. Uh, like I say, it's one of them. Samuel Peters, he got out with a few shots and then I just wanted out of there. Um, and obviously, he done what he had to do. And um, it's one of them. it was frustrating. It was a frustrating fight. Like I said, I didn't perform to my best and um, it was a frustrating night. So it's one of them, you just got to and they we won and that's it. Do you ever feel like maybe you're being a little harsh on yourself in the sense that obviously because of the tactics that Samuel Peters was employing on the fight, that you maybe are taking that bit more of a harsher stance with your own performance because it's trying it's difficult to try and manoeuvre around what he was trying to do? Uh, listen, you can always be harsh on yourself, but that's it. When you're not happy, you're not happy, are you? So it's one of them. What was the experience like boxing out in Saudi Arabia with regards to the fans? And I imagine it was very different to what it would have been like when you fought in Manchester against Chris Norad and when you fought against other opponents here in the UK. Yeah, it was, uh, like I say, a different atmosphere. But it was a good atmosphere there. The, they all loved the fighting and stuff. So it was, um, it was a good place to be at the time and uh, get the fighting. Obviously, the headline fight on that night was uh, Amir Khan versus Billy Dib. Did you manage to catch that fight? Yeah, I managed to catch that. Uh, Amir Khan boxed well. Like you say, he only couldn't do really, he was a bigger man and uh, he couldn't, Timmy Bids couldn't do nothing with him. We'll link back to Khan afterwards because there's been rumours of that Pacquiao fight, but sticking to yourself, prior to Peters, you fought uh, Chris Norad. Just talking about that fight, obviously I hadn't had a chance to catch up with you since. What was your thoughts on your performance with that? Yeah, again, it was just, like you say, that was an opponent's just going through... Um, like you say, it didn't last too long, really. He was just trying to get the rounds in. Obviously, you can only fight what's in front of you. So, hopefully, we now we just get the fights more flowing in and uh, the more fights this year. So, obviously, at the minute, we're doing that. So, keep them busy. Obviously, you stopped Chris Norad. I mean, you had the, the bout with Samuel Peters, which was obviously dirty tactics employed on his behalf. There was some criticism over social media with regards to your opponent choice in Chris Norad and then the way that you was boxing against Samuel Peters. When you see that stuff, you know, what do you make of it all? Do you think it's unfair? Do you think it's harsh? Or? Honestly, I don't really listen to what people's got to say. I'm, I'm already harsh on myself. I understand with the things, like you say, you've got to understand with different opponents, especially Samuel Peters, he's very experienced and he knows it's just a bit more frustrating. That never lose your head a bit, but uh, it's all experience. Do you think with that criticism, it's because also of the fact that you are heavyweight and when people, even just for casual audience, they think of heavyweights, they think they're just going to come out swinging and looking for a stoppage victory regardless of what's going on in the fight and what tactics are being used? Yeah, listen, do you know what it is? Sometimes your head gets a bit frustrated, but at the end of the day, it's boxing. And um, me being a heavyweight, I can move uh, and stuff. But uh, like you say, with that fight there, it didn't go, everything didn't go to plan, but... One of them, you did have a dirty fight in front of you, so you just got to get on with it. So talk about future plans. I know you're back in, in camp straight away. What have you briefly mentioned or spoken to your dad about? Uh, nothing nothing yet. Hopefully big news is coming soon. So the um, plan is, is just uh, knuckle down in the gym and uh, hopefully have some fighting news soon.
you've been in world title final eliminators, you've fought for a world title. There's some very good domestic fights possibly available to you. What level do you see your next fight being at? Do you see yourself with maybe someone like a Daniel Dubois or a Joe Joyce, or do you think you're above that? Listen, I think I'm above that, and I believe I am. Um, like I say to you, whatever fights come, team sits back, whoever they bring in front of me, I'm, I'm willing to fight. As we have mentioned, those guys, just to get your thoughts on, obviously a lot of them have fought over the past couple of weeks. We'll start off with uh, Frank Warren show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Nathan Gorman versus Daniel Dubois, your thoughts on that fight? Um, like I say, obviously uh, the fight the fight is what it was. Daniel, Daniel done a good job, but um, it was one of them. Nathan Gorman fought the wrong fight with him, but he had a lot on. But uh, it's one of them. Nathan Gorman is a good fighter. He'll come again. I believe that for sure. Uh, in boxing, you make mistakes. Uh, you just got to come how badly you want it and come back stronger. Daniel Dubois is someone who you've sparred previously. What are your thoughts with regards to his performance and did he surprise you at all? Uh, no, Daniel, Daniel Dubois does what he always does. He's, he's powerful, he's strong and he's coming forward and he's throwing lots of shots. Both Daniel and Nathan starting their professional careers very early, as did you. What would be your advice to them with regards to how your career has gone for these past few years? There's going to be a lot of expectation of him, in particular Daniel on the back of that victory. How do you think that he should look to manage that expectation? Listen, you just got to knuckle down. It's one of them. He's, uh, he's doing the right job. He's learning your job properly. So uh, more fights you have, the more experience you go. So you'll learn on the way. Obviously, on that undercard, Joe Joyce defeated Bryant Jennings. Don't suppose you managed to catch that one either? Uh, yeah, I got to the highlights of that one. Like you say, Joe done what he had to do. He's a tough kid and uh, he done what he done. I mean, obviously, over this past, well, last weekend, we saw Oscar Rivas versus uh, Dillian White. Dillian White coming out with uh, a unanimous de decision points victory. Your thoughts on that fight? Listen, like you say, Dillian White done well. He's, he's one of them. He fights anyone and he's, uh, he's talking the distance. And uh, he, he got dropped as well, didn't he? Yeah. So he done well to fight through. What are your thoughts on Dillian? Obviously, he's been made for WBC mandatory to face the winner of uh, Wilder versus Tyson. If that fight does happen, what are your thoughts with regards to how long it's taken for Dillian to cement that place? I say with heavyweight boxing and uh, title shots and that, it's, you can always be missed, missed by. You can only just do, like I say, you can just sit down and wait, but at the end of the day, he's choosing to fight, so it's good. Just to link it to yourself, how do you intend to break back into that mould again? You know, it's proving to become even more difficult to try and get those fights. For example, you know, we intend to see the Joshua Ruiz rematch. Next year you'll have Wilder versus Tyson and then the winner of that versus Dillian White. And then maybe Anthony Joshua or Andy Ruiz Jr. unifying the entire division against one of the other three fighters for the WBC title. How do you try and break into that mould to get another world title fight? I can say I'm one of them. I'm never afraid to fight anyone, and I believe I can beat anyone. So the distance is whoever comes will fight. And obviously, this, just to link back to this past weekend once again, Chisora versus Artish Bilka. Again, your thoughts? Uh, and very, uh, again, a very uh, quick performance by uh, Chisora. Like you say, he's, uh, he's done well. But at the end of the day, I think his style suits him perfect. So he just come into the shots and he made easy work of it. I mean, Dave Allen versus David Price, another 10th round uh, stoppage victory for David Price. Your thoughts on that? Uh, like I say, uh, well done to David Price. He stuck to his, uh, he stuck to his boxing. He didn't lose his head in there and he done what he had to do. And uh, he is in boxing, he has levels. And um, obviously, Dave Allen, he's got a good heart and he's, uh, he's a good kid as well. I like Dave Allen, but he's uh, he does come up too short when it comes there. But like you say, he's a f he's fight, he's willing to fight anyone, and he uh, he done what he had to do. I know you've mentioned you feel you're above that. Would but would maybe a fight against a Chisora or maybe a David Price would, that, would it interest you if it was put to you? Like I say, it wouldn't bother me who jumps in the ring with me. I'll fight him, so I'm not afraid of anyone. And then obviously just to get your thoughts on a few of things going on in the boxing world, start going back to Amir Khan. He announced that he a deal had been signed to fight Manny Pacquiao back in Saudi Arabia on November 8th. Since then, Manny Pacquiao's team have denied it. But what are your thoughts with regards to if that fight was to happen? Um, like I say, Amir Khan is be a good fight. As I say, it's a big, big money fight for him. So uh, hats off to him if he gets it. Manny Pacquiao this past weekend defeating Keith Furman. Again, your thoughts on that one? 
Uh, I knew that was going to happen. I had a feeling that was going to happen with uh, Keith Furman's last two performances. I think ever since he had the layout with his shoulder, I don't think he's ever been the same fighter. Some people have tried to make suggestions that Manny Pacquiao may have had some form of a performance-enhancing drug because there was no VADA testing in place for the, for the fight. Could you imagine that scenario where Manny Pacquiao had something? Um, listen, you never know. It could happen. It could happen. But I don't think I don't think he would. Well, he, he's not been tested before, so I can't see why not. Would a Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather rematch interest you? Not really. Floyd's done what he's had to do. He's already proved his point. It'll only be the same outcome again. Well, Hugh Fury, before I do let you shoot, in fact, I forgot to ask you, Joshua Ruiz, a rematch. How do you see that fight playing out, provided that it is announced uh, as soon as what we expect it to be? Um, I reckon if, if Joshua fights the same fight as he did last time and goes in there trying to knock him out, Ruiz will do exactly the same outcome because Ruiz is a good fighter and he's a short fighter, so he's coming forward no matter what. But if Joshua... Uh, boxes on the back foot like he did with uh, Parker behind his jab and uses his more of his feet and let him come onto the shots then I do see Joshua coming back out with his world titles. Some suggestions that AJ has been looking to tra change his uh, trainer etc. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's harsh on Rob McCracken or do you think that maybe he needs a change to try and freshen things up? No I don't think he needs a change he just needs to look at the fight differently instead of trying to knock everyone out. If he just I think Rob McCracken's a good fighter and he's do, I think he's done well with uh, Joshua and I think he'd probably, probably go downhill if he didn't, if he changed um, with Rob McCracken because Rob McCracken knows him inside and out. So uh, he's done well with him so far. I just think he needed his tactics. It was wrong for that fight. People picked up on a few things in the build-up to the fight and a couple of rumours surfaced after that maybe AJ had been knocked out in sparring uh, in a week before the fight and that he was having a panic attack just before his ring walk as, as to whether or not that's true or not. It's all been denied so far. Could you see any of that when you was looking at him? Some people were mentioning that he was having a, a neck massage in the ring just before he was about to start. Could you see anything in, in, in AJ that you thought something's not right here? Listen, you don't know, do you? Uh, you can, like everyone's always said, he's always talking like it could have been this, it could have been that. But then the day he lost, and uh, it's all about now the rematch. Well, here if you I can now let you go. So, as always, thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Hey, no problem, you're very welcome.